What is going on, Detroit Lions fans? Welcome back to the Detroit Den 313, your favorite, hopefully, Detroit Lions podcast. Hey, it's Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday. College football, no Michigan football. We got a bye week. I'm not exactly sure who Michigan State's playing off the top of my head. Uh, leave it in the comments to let me know. But also, man, we got the Red Wings playing. Tigers, ALDS, game five today, one o'clock. Best pitcher in baseball on the mound. Anything can happen. Anything can happen, and I know we're not a Tigers podcast, but we do. Um, if you see me, you know I'm always, always wearing this old English D, man. Uh, I'm cheering for the Tigers. Scuba on the mound, best pitcher in baseball. Let's go beat those Indians and get to the ALCS and, and beat the Yankees. Uh, let's let's bring a World Series home too while we're at it. You know, if we could just add that to the list. But it's an exciting time to be a Detroit sports fan right now, man. Uh, I got some stuff I'm kind of pondering. Uh, I don't want to. Spill the beans too much. Some uh, more more stuff that I'd like to talk about when it comes to the city of Detroit. I'm working on, you know, possibly starting something new. We'll 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 see. Um, Detroit Lions, man, get ready for game day against Sunday against the Dallas Cowboys, the world's most hated team and America's favorite team. America's favorite team, that being the Detroit Lions. We have taken your title, Dallas Cowboys. We're taking your title, we're taking your pride, and we're taking your heart and soul on Sunday when we come to to Dallas and Little D as we call it here in Detroit. Detroit's big D, Dallas is little D. We're going to come down there, spank your butts, walk out with a win, revenge. But when I had to take a little bit of time off last week, I missed some stuff. And as much as I don't want to be a Detroit Lions news channel or just, just talking about news, I like to talk about factual stuff and, and some hypothetical stuff and just kind of get your mind spent. I don't want to just be like, hey, man, Detroit Lions signed so-and-so today. It's great. It's great for the team. This is what's going to happen. I don't want to do that. It's boring to me. I don't want to be a news channel. But there is some interesting stuff going on with uh, two players in particular that I'm really focused on, two young players, one who I think is going to be a huge impact, the other one maybe more of one of those Brad Holmes projects, but who I think is going to be more of an impact sooner rather than later, and it won't be in the Cowboys game. He has been um, ruled out. It's Christian Mahogany, all right? It's illness. I, I don't think he's – I don't know. I, I saw something he had mono. I, I personally never had mono. Uh, I'm kind of familiar with it. I'm, I mean, I'm not a doctor or like a medical expert or anything, but I didn't think mono lingered around for months. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with Christian Mahogany. Illness, not ready for Dallas. That's okay. Hey, I, I said when we drafted him, this was probably one of those guys where I was okay with taking him in the third round in my mock drafts. Several times I had that scenario. Hey, Christian Mahogany, let's sure up some offensive line depth. Let's just and let's just answer some questions with this draft pick and get a kid who can come in here play either guard, maybe center. I'm not 100% comfortable with Mahogany at center, and we don't have to really worry about that. We have two really good ones, obviously Frank Ragnall, Graham Glasgow, who stepped in big last week. I don't need to worry about Mahogany at center. I don't need to worry about Mahogany at guard right away. I thought Coyote Awasequa, man, that's a tough name for me to say. Sometimes I nail it, sometimes I butcher it. Um, but I thought Awasika played extremely well against Seattle. Um, I talked about him in our pregame show. I said he's going to be uh, a lot of eyes are on him. I thought that Mike McDaniel, or not Mike McDaniel, um, but I'm drawing a blank on the the coach for the Seahawks, leave it in the comments, drawing a blank right now. Uh, Michigan's old Mike McDonald. That's what it is. Um, I thought he was going to take advantage of Awasiko being in the game, kind of saying, Hey man, I'm going to test this kid. Let's see what he's got. I think that might be a vulnerability. Answered the call, man. And, and, and I said it a couple episodes ago, I thought Coyote probably deserved maybe a game ball. I get it. There's a lot of people on offense who played very, very well in that game. Um, Jared Goff, 18 for 18. Um, JMO had some big plays. David Montgomery had some big plays. It was tough. It was a tough game to get a game ball, but I think Coyote deserved a little recognition. He played great, but going into training camp, I was very concerned, not concerned, very curious is the word I'm looking for to, to see who was going to be that next guy into the rotation. Christian Mahogany was a guy. I thought he might throw his name in the hat. I thought we'd be talking about him if an injury popped up like the uh, Frank Ragnar injury. I thought, hey, maybe maybe Christian comes in and he plays that guard position where Graham's been playing. Sick, not healthy, don't know exactly what's going on, but I do think he's going to be a solid, solid offensive lineman for the Detroit Lions in the future. Maybe not this year, 
maybe not next year. Uh, Brad Holmes likes those project players, and sometimes those project players can take some time. Okay, um, I like that he's called the dirt bag. It's a it's a term of endearment. Like it's a it's a good positive name, I guess, in a way for for Christian Mahogany because he just plays <clears throat> dirt bag football in, in, in clean in a clean way, not like Ndama Kung Su. All right, so I, I really think this um, Christian Mahogany is going to be a piece that we're talking about in the future. I'm glad to see that he was cleared from the IR. He's uh, just not playing in this game, but that's okay. We don't need offensive linemen. Next, the other one that intrigues me, and I think this is someone we'll see sooner rather than later. I don't know when Brad Holm or Dan Campbell's even said, I don't know when he's going to be ready, but he's returned to practice. Broderick Martin. Okay, it is year two, I guess technically for, for, for Broderick Martin. And we haven't seen him a lot. Okay. He played a little bit last year, very, very spotty duty. When he came in, not a lot of reps, not a lot of actual game time. Again, this is a guy in the preseason. We were talking about what's his role going to be. We had, a. I wish I could say like, we had only had like one or two guys to keep an eye on in preseason. It was hard to keep tabs on all these guys we were watching in preseason games, training camp, all that. But Broderick Martin, when he was on the field, was the biggest guy on the field and the biggest problem on the field at times. Terrell Williams needs a little time to work with him on some stuff, some some techniques, some leverage stuff. Um, I think when he figures that out, and I don't know when that'll be, if that is this season, him, DJ Reader, I'm tired of talking about it. I'm ready to see it. Him and DJ Reader or him and Ali McNeil, I don't care what the match is, who he's working with. You are not taking three offensive linemen and moving two men that size, three on two. I don't care. Three men versus two, those two big-ass dudes, you're not going to move them. Okay, now Broderick Martin might not offer a lot in the pass rush game, but what he can do is take a guard one-on-one, -on -one and physically he's capable. If he can just learn some technique, learn some hand placement, learn how to use his leverage and his weight. One of my favorite types of offensive and defensive linemen – is, is people with a wrestling back, background. If you guys are familiar, when we were talking pre-draft stuff, I was very high on Zach Frazier from West Virginia. He's one of the top five offensive linemen rookies in the league right now. Why did I like him? Because he comes from a wrestling background. What they're really good at is knowing how to manipulate human weight, how to position themselves in, in proper, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Proper uh, technique, hand placement, foot placement, weight dispersion, all that stuff, like all the all that all that stuff that you don't see. It's just an intangible. If Broderick Martin can figure that out, working with DJ Reader, they will be the two most unblockable defensive linemen in the NFL from just a, a size standpoint. Now, they might not be the most athletic. They might not be the most agile or burst of speed or any of that, but they're going to plug holes. They're going to push pockets directly back into a quarterback's face. Who's on the other side over there? 97? Aiden Hutchinson coming free on a one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen what he's been doing all year. He's been wreaking havoc. He's a number. He's the number one rated pass rusher in the league right now. Did we ever think that he would be that in year three? I thought he'd get there eventually. Thought it might take a little bit longer, but he's solidly. Aiden Hutchinson has just solidly, solidly progressed year in and year out. And if we can see baby, baby steps from Broderick Martin, my baby step right right now would be when Brad and Dan decide he's ready, getting him on a field. I can't see you on the sidelines, okay? I need to see you on a field. And if that's not this year, I'm okay with that. I, I am okay, but I like that we're trending in the right direction. The Detroit Lions, when I look at their injury report a couple weeks ago, man, we were all like, damn, we're getting hit. We're getting slammed. Like, this bye week can't be here soon enough. Bye week's here. We're all healthy. Frank's back. Brian Branch is back. Kirby Joseph had a hamstring injury. Little tweak. We talked about that a little bit. Didn't really dive in because I didn't know exactly what the injury was. Again, don't want to be a news channel. Kirby Joseph. Full go. Our whole team is healthy. Now let's start looking at some of these other pieces that are going to come in and just kind of bolster this lineup. All right. People like Broderick Martin, who I think will get into some games. People like Christian Mahogany. I'm good with you on the sidelines for this year. You, Giovanni Manu, learn how to be a pro. Learn how to be in the NFL. Learn some technique. Your time will come. I really like what this team is doing right now. Taking care of their bodies. Depth. Not overusing anyone. Um, I really like the way our roster is built. I really have liked it for a long time and just seeing all of these pieces finally, finally getting healthy. And I know we got a long way to go and there's going to be more bumps and bruises along the road, more depth, 
Let's get these young guys coached up so that when we do have those bumps, we just kind of filter them right back into the mix. Guys, I'm excited. These are going to be two players. One further down the road in Mahogany, Broderick Martin. I'd like to see a little bit of something this year. If not, it's okay. But they're back. They're going to bolster this offensive and defensive line, and we are going to be a problem, guys. Thanks for watching. Stick around. Leave some comments. I'll be back later with another show.